Okay, we're live. Well, good morning, everyone. It is great to be back. Uh, I really appreciate Tim taking over for two Sundays in a row. Uh, allowed us to take a full week together, and uh, we are very appreciative of it. We had a, a wonderful vacation. There was no bad rain. I mean, it was a little warm a couple days, but we got to do everything we wanted to do. The kids did not drive us insane, and they, this is how good it was. On, when we got in the car to come home, Elliot, without being prompted, said, thank you, Mom and Dad, for vacation. Now, that's from a 13-year-old, so that's huge. So, so it was good. So we had a, a great time, and it is great to be back with all of you. So uh, Carla will start with some announcements. And then we'll, we'll begin our worship service. So a few announcements. Uh, you can follow along on your bulletin, or they are also up on the screen here. Um, first and foremost, if you have joys or concerns, as always, please send them to Pastor Scott. He'll listen to a phone call. He'll take an email. He'll take a text. Uh, you can always call the prayer chain. But we want to make sure we get uh, those announcements, joys, and concerns out to the congregation. We also have Sunday School, if you're not aware, that meets at 9 a.m. Uh, in the parlor. Uh, this Sunday we had more of a catch-up session than Sunday School, so it's kind of a fluid thing, but come at 9 o'clock on a Sunday, you just never know what you're going to get. Um, some good fellowships, some good Sunday School. Uh, the Ladies' Mission Group is continuing to collect personal care items and non-perishable items um, to support the community. You'll see a list of those in the bulletin, uh, all sorts of clothing items for personal care, other kind of hygiene things, and they're collecting them in the bins uh, just in the hallway as you enter the door. We also have eyewear that we're collecting, uh, all different kinds of eyewear for donations. You can use any kind of uh, unused glasses in the bin by the office supply room. Um, any other announcements for the good of the church? Yes, Kendall. So, just a little update on my project. Um, so, slowly we are starting to collect things in as like the stuff's being purchased from Amazon. Um, I've gotten to present to two different groups so far and hopefully continuing more. But, um, so if anybody would like to donate. And then I'm also, for those of you asking, going to send the Amazon wish list to Pastor Scott and it will get out to all of you guys somehow. So, thank you guys in advance for your yeah. so, uh, Kendall, appreciate your generosity for donating to her cause to help Baby Basics. They, if you missed it, they are, what they're doing, there's an age range for people to be in Baby Basics. And when the kid reaches the thir three-year-old level, they no longer get diapers. Instead, what Kendall's doing is making potty training kits so that they can continue to follow up with these families post-Baby Basics. Uh, and give them tools to help them potty train their kids. So she is taking checks or cash donations to Baby Basics. Uh, everything will be funneled to there so that it's, you know, you get your tax write off and all that. Uh, but they also have an Amazon wish list. If you like shopping on Amazon uh, and if you want to get extra Kroger points, you buy Amazon gift cards at Kroger's and you can get extra fuel points and then you shop for stuff for her on Amazon. You can double dip and help out there. Uh, but I'll get a link, and I'll send it out to the congregation. You click on that link, there's a wish list, and you can buy stuff, and it'll get shipped directly 
uh, to them. Really click, really easy. So you can donate money or donate items, or you can go out and purchase any of the items yourself and bring them in. Uh, but if you give the money donation, sometimes they have resources where they can buy things in bulk and at cheaper rates because they're a nonprofit. So uh, there is help um, with that. And also, you should have gotten two things. You should have gotten a bulletin and a communion handout. If you did not get a communion handout, you won't be able to follow along with communion because it won't be on the screen. Unfortunately, my laptop is still at Dell for the second week now, so I wasn't able to do my regular PowerPoint. Um, so if you need one, raise your hand. And Danny is back there. Danny will be happy uh, to grab some communion handouts for you. Uh, so you'll need that. Um, our, and the youth group um, is not meeting tonight. Normally we are setting up to meet first and third Sundays, uh, but because of some things going on tonight, neither Duncan nor myself are available tonight. So youth group will meet August 8th, Sunday, August 8th. Uh, any other announcements for the good of the church? All right, well, if that is it, if you would please stand and join us in our call to worship. Join me in the call to worship. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make, Make known, known among, among the, the nations, nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you are a holy God. You are a mighty God. You are the creator of the universe. Lord, we have gathered today to come and worship and honor you. Lord, let us remember that today is not about us. Let everything we do point towards you and to your glory. All of this we ask and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Join us now for hymn number 64, Holy, 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 verses 1, 2, and 4.
All right, we're gathering back now. So if you're a person who is watching online, but you can be here, you're missing out. Now, if you can't be here, we respect that. My mom is in Florida. She can't be here, so we respect that Facebook is a wonderful tool. But some of you, when I've called you, are admittedly saying, I've been lazy, and I'm here to tell you you're missing out because it is a wonderful blessing to go around and shake hands and love on people and share uh, our, our lives together. So if you're being lazy, you're missing out. So as we come together for a time of joys and concerns, um, Miss Laura told me uh, a good joy. She said Kendall has been coming over to sit with her times, and she said she is one of the most wonderful young ladies she's ever met. So, uh, so she really enjoys uh, her time with you, so thank you, Kendall, uh, for that. Um, and Laura would also like us to uh, remember her son who is having a hernia surgery tomorrow. So uh, let's remember that. Um, we also got some other prayer requests uh, this week. Uh, Chris Derringer, a friend of Joan Fisher, she had a really nasty fall and ended up breaking wrists and two wrists and ribs and all kinds of other things. So she's got to have multiple surgeries to correct each of these things. So uh, be in prayer for her friend Chris. Um, also uh, continue prayers for Marty Krause. Um, she had a stroke last week. Um, and then she found out she's been having strokes. She's had multiple strokes she wasn't even aware of. They determined through the scans. Uh, but they've got her on several different medications. And um, if you call her, she is her normal, jovial, uh, enjoyable self. Uh, but uh, feel free to give her a call and, and just uh, um, express your friendship and fellowship with her. Um, uh, Joanne Sue Abel Haig, whichever name you know her by. Um, because some people I talk to, I said Joanne, and they go, who? Sue, who? Uh, Joanne Sue Abel Haig. Um, um, she is um, um, having knee surgery on August 11th uh, for knee replacement. And then she also just wanted to just continue to share the joy um, that uh, the grandniece, uh, Aaron, um, who they bought the farm over there, they are doing some updates, but they are keeping the character and the nature of the house and trying to just keep it. Uh, if you've never been over there, it's quite a charming place. Um, a lot of the stuff was, was built uh, and done by Mr. Haig's father and then the Mr. Haig himself, and it, it's quite, quite a nice uh, place over there. Uh, so she just wanted to share that joy uh, that it continues to be in the family and they're doing well uh, with that. And she also wanted to thank Ronnie Krause, um, who out of the kindness of his heart sh showed up and did some bush hogging uh, for them over there too. So uh, that was uh, very wonderful. Um, and then, of course, we had a great vacation, so that is a, a joy for us. Um, and, and, and again, Tim filling in um, for our vacation was uh, a true blessing. And we got to... Now, Sunday, we didn't even watch it live. We tried, but we were in the middle of Hawking Hills, and there was no signal, so we didn't get to watch it till we were actually on our way up uh, to Cleveland later that night. Uh, but the, this past Sunday morning, we were able to join live. We went out, and we were on the lake uh, and watching the service at the same time, so it was a wonderful setting. So uh, we, we were able to worship with all of you, so that was a great blessing on that. Um, we also want to remember um, um, uh, Jake. Uh, Jake seemed to be doing well through his rehab up until this past week, and then uh, Danny got a message uh, just yesterday that Jake took uh, a bad turn, and they are expected uh, Jake to enter into a hospice um, um, today or tomorrow. Uh, so we want to just continue prayers for Jake and Carol and Andy and the whole family. Um, this has just been a roller coaster ride of it's awful, 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 and then oh, it seems like it's better, and then it's awful, and then it's better, and then it's awful, and it's better, and it's just it's a difficult ride. 
Uh, so just uh, remember them in your prayers. Continue to pray for them. Uh, do we have other joys and concerns? Danny? Uh, I just want to share this joy that, you know, uh, I visited with Howard and Dottie Seaver this week, or yet yeah, a Friday, and uh, I've never seen two people so upbeat like they are. And they said to please say hello to everyone in our congregation and thank them for their prayers for them, and uh, they're doing okay. And they, they enjoy visits, so if you'd like to go see them, just let just ask me or Danny. We can give you their information. Um, it, it's really easy to get in and out, um, and um, they've got a nice little place, and just 30 minutes of your time just means the world uh, to any of our shut-ins, so uh, remember that. And I just remembered another one. Uh, remember Peggy Edwards? Um, she uh, is having problems with... Um, blood clots um, and she's at Hildebrand right now doing rehab um, for that um, there's been some medication changes and then it caused some blood clots and some other issues so uh, she's trying to recover from that and uh, um, it'll be a question of whether when or whether she can go home or not because uh, she's been living on her own for quite some time uh, but her health and other issues are starting to add up so and then, uh, so, Ruth? Yes. Both of them are having procedures done this week. Pray for Ruth's son in law. Uh, uh, um, Brent and Rodney, right? Uh, are both having procedures this week? So, uh, prayers for both of Ruth's son in laws. Okay. All right. Other joys and concerns to share. Ethan. I, uh, I believe it's someone's uh, birthday. Really? Yeah. Dad. <laughs> and I think it's someone's birthday, Dad. <laughs> you could be right. I think on this day there's been other people born. <laughs> Somebody's birthday it is today. Do you, uh, you mind telling the congregation whose birthday it is? It is my birthday. <laughs> Thank you to the Sunday school class who sang to me when I came in. Now let me tell you how old I feel now. This past week, before we went on vacation, no, it was no, it was this week after we got back from vacation. I had to renew my driver's license, and you're supposed to get the new new driver's license. So I went through all the list of everything you're supposed to have, and I get there, and I think I have everything I need. And the young lady says, no, you still need your birth certificate. I said, I've got proof that I've been born on all these documents. She said, no, you need your birth certificate. So I go home, get the key to the safe deposit box, go to the bank, get my birth certificate out. Now, this is my original birth certificate. Get back, show back up in line, and she says, no, you can't use this. And I said, what do you mean? I said, this is a birth certificate from the hospital. It's got the seal. It's got the doctor's signatures. It's got everything on it. She said, no. See, after you were born, they started, you have to get one of the ones that the county records, and you have to have the official one. And I'm like, this is the birth certificate that I went to elementary school on, that I en enrolled in the Army in, that I, you, you know, all these things, my driver's license and everything. And, and she pretty much said, you're too old. You have to get a new birth certificate. So... We, they do want your money. There's no doubt about that. But so that that made me feel a little bit old today, uh, this week. But that's okay. Glenn is here, so I feel really young today. I'm just joking, Glenn. You know I love you. Glenn is always young at heart. <laughs> so no, it was a joy. It's been a wonderful day so far. So uh, it's great. We've had a great week. Any other joys and concerns? Uh, Joan, oh yes, I, I had it written down here and I didn't say it. Uh, Judy Fisher uh, had a heart attack yesterday. Uh, it turns out it was a mild heart attack. Uh, they've got her on all the medications that you would normally expect uh, to control that, and she is uh, resting comfortably and alert in the hospital. Uh, so it looks like everything is going to be okay, but continue to pray uh, for Judy Fisher So um, uh, on that. So thank you. Uh, for reminding me, but I did have it written down here. 
That's the, I, didn't, I just missed it. All right. Any others? All right, let's go uh, to the Lord in prayer. Then we'll join together in our Lord's Prayer. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, it is a joyful time to be here in worship. Uh, it is great to get together with fellow believers. Uh, no matter where they are, we are together in spirit. And Lord, uh, allow us just to continue to celebrate who you are today and honor you in all that we do. Lord, uh, but at this time we petition you for your hand uh, to continue to move in the lives of many people. Lord, we have many who are in need of your healing touch. We have many who need your comfort. We need many who need your strength. Lord, allow them to find it in you. Lord, let them see it in us, and may we be an inspiration, a comfort uh, in their time of need. Uh, Lord, uh, just move us. Let us be your hands and feet to all of those who are in need. And Lord, we are very grateful for the many blessings and answered prayers. Lord, we thank you that you've put your hand of protection on many of our uh, congregants uh, as they've dealt with many issues in the past week or so. And Lord, uh, uh, we just ask your hand of blessing to continue uh, to strengthen and unify this church as we go uh, through some uh, extraordinary times. Uh, it's been a, a, a weird year and a half, and there's other things looming ahead of us. But we know that if we pull together and we are unified with our focus on you, that you will lead us and guide us and bring us to a true blessing. Uh, Lord, as we come together, we remember your son, Jesus, and we say the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning begin in Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8, and then into Revelation 4, verses 1 through 11. From Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two wings they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Now moving into Revelation. <clears throat> After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me, there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby. A rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there were what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes, in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, and the third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty and who was, and is, and is to come. 
Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now it is time for our offering. Will the ushers please come forward? Patri as our response. Never mind. <laughs> Glory be to the Father. Lord, you are the creator of all things, and all things that have been made are through you. Lord, there is nothing new that we have created that didn't come from you. And so therefore, what we give to you today is already yours. You have allowed us to receive certain blessings in our lives, and today we return just a portion of those blessings that you have given to us. Lord, we ask your mighty hand to be upon these gifts of offering and tithes. May they be used to further your kingdom. May they be used to make this church the church you have called us to be. May we be a light unto this community so that all people may know your Son, Jesus Christ, and share in the same promises and blessings that we have. All of this we ask and pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you would, please remain standing for our next hymn, hymn number 77, How Great Thou Art. We'll do verses 1 
2 and 4. Hey, I, I like a lot of the new contemporary music, but there are just some hymns you can't replace. Well, again, it is great and wonderful to be back with all of you. Again, I can't express just how grateful I was to have Tim fill in with me, or for me. And the only problem with Tim is that you've been spoiled two weeks in a row with his direct, get to the point, resulting, as John says, world speed records for church. And there's nothing wrong with that, no complaints. And there are certainly times when it is perfect for a message to be simple and straight to the point. However, there are times when the journey to the point is just as important as the point itself. At one of the places we went to on our uh, vacation up at Cuyahoga National Park, there were several trail options. And each of the trail on our map was marked by distance and difficulty. And on this particular afternoon, I said, 
it's more fun to do the difficult trails. And so the family agreed. And shortly into this trail, we found ourselves on a very steep ascent. And my hiking app said we climbed 125 feet right off the bat. And not only was the trail steep, it was muddy and very rugged. And to top it off, it was very humid. When we reached the top part of this trail, let's just say not all of us, all of us, were happy with my trail selection. And just ahead of us on the trail map was a bypass connector, which means we could take this cut across and miss most of the remainder of the difficult trail and get to our destination point a lot faster. And despite the struggles in the beginning, we chose to tough out the remainder of the trail. We reached a ridge line, and along that ridge line was a unique clearing like we had never seen before. And there's just a, a little picture of it there. And if you weren't paying attention, you could have just walked right by this clearing. But we stopped, and we stepped into the small clearing where we saw some beautiful flowers. And in the center of the clearing was an old abandoned piece of antique machinery. And then as we looked some more, we saw remnants of an old vineyard. Grapes that had once been grown in rows had now overtaken this clearing. And as you can see, that old piece of equipment looked like a half wooden barrel on wheels and had a pump on the front. And we, quit, we spent some, some time in this clearing. And we talked about the vineyard and we wondered if the grapes were for wine or for jelly. We pondered about the old equipment and how it may have worked and what it was used for. And we were intrigued about how what was once controlled by man was now being reclaimed by nature. We saw how other plants and wildlife were just intertwined, forming this unique spot in just an absolutely beautiful setting. And we would have missed this place had we only been interested in our destination. If we would have just been focused on the trail, we would have missed this treasure. And if we would have taken the shortcut or the bypass, we would have never seen it. And like many of my sermons, today the sermon is often more about the journey than the destination. And we need to journey sometimes through scriptures to better appreciate what our ultimate point is. Now this week, coming back from vacation, was not a normal week. As many of you know, the week back from vacation is never fun. There are things that need to be unpacked and put away. And I'll admit that I still have a suitcase sitting right beside my bed that I keep saying, well, eventually I'll use all the stuff out of it, right? And there's lots of laundry to do. There was a yard that needed mowed. There was a stack of mail to go through and a host of other things at the house. And somehow we had to find a way to get ourselves back into routine. We have to get back to a schedule of cooking and cleaning and sleeping and all the different activities that our kids are in. And then when you get back from vacation, some of you remember there's all the things at your job to take care of. And of course for me, it's not just my other job, but the church. Tons of catch-up and other problems that need to be resolved. And not only do we have all the normal back-to-home stuff, we have back-to-school activities starting up. We're starting to get, I don't know, we probably got, what, 30, 40 emails from the school while we were on vacation. And then Ethan's doing band camp, and Ellie starts training for cross-country, and we got fall baseball. And Dell still has my laptop. Just a little sore spot. So this was not my favorite week. It was difficult for me because I didn't have all my tools to prepare for Sunday. And on Friday, I was very frustrated not having my laptop back after two weeks. 
And if all of that were not enough, we come back to start seeing that more and more COVID restrictions are coming back. Some of the stores are putting up signs for mask requirements again. But I'll tell you, it's always interesting to see how God works in my life during a week of sermon prep. It's also interesting to see how Satan works on me during a week of sermon prep. This week has been all about vacation and post-vacation. This week has been about challenges and complaints and frustrations. And do you know what this week has not been about? It's not been about God for me. My focus this week has not been about God. I didn't have a lot of God conversations. I wasn't back into my daily prayers. I wasn't back into my daily reading. I was frustrated. I was upset. And I had all this list to take care of. Well, our sermon series over the next few weeks is about changing our focus. We've become so focused on worldly things that we have lost focus on who God is and the kind of lives that God has called us to live. And this sermon series that I'm working on is from this book called Focusing My Gaze by Max Wilkins. So any good stuff you hear, he gets credit. Today is about regaining our upward focus. And maybe by our hymns and our scripture selections, you can see that our focus is looking upward to God and his greatness. When was the last time you pondered just who God is? On our vacation, we got to see some beautiful landscapes and lakes. We saw some glacial grooves that were carved into the ground. And I pondered, how did God create this world in such a way that to us it appears it could have only done over millions or billions of years to do what he did in just six days? And when we consider the reading from Isaiah, Isaiah has a vision of God. And not only does he see God in these heavenly beings, he hears God. And through the smoke that was in the air, he breathes God. And he's not just a bystander, he interacts with God. And through his experience, he is transformed by God. And we must ask ourselves, is it possible for us, you know, the people who aren't Isaiah prophets, is it possible for us to truly experience God? And when we really experience God, we will find that we cannot help but be to, to be transformed. Encounters with God lead to life transformation. So what is stopping us from having encounters with God? Is it because we're waiting on God to do it? Do we expect God to initiate this experience? I think most of us want God to appear to us in a burning bush like he did for Moses. We just want to sit back and say, God, when you want to reveal yourself to us, just go ahead and do it. I'll sit back and I'll wait. And while it is possible for that to happen, that is not what we should expect. And if we were to go back and look at the story of Isaiah the prophet, we will discover that Isaiah was seeking an encounter with God. Isaiah saw God because he was looking for God. Isaiah saw God because he was looking for God. You see, God commands us to seek him. In Jeremiah 29, it says, God says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And Jesus even commands us in Matthew 6. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and then all these things 
we be given to you as well. We are to seek God. You see, God is always there. He's always present. But we often miss him because we are so distracted by life. So let's go to our scriptures from Isaiah. Chapter 6, 1 starts like this. It says, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Now why is that important? Was it just a time marker? You know, in the year King Uzziah died, this happened. We see this was a traumatic year. King Uzziah is said to be the greatest king since King Solomon. He reigned for over 50 years. And in those years, <clears throat> excuse me, in those years, the nation of Judah was peaceful, productive, and prosperous. Prosperous. The king was a great military leader. He had wise economic policies. And most importantly, he was a strong man of faith that listened to God's prophets and helped bring the people of Judah back to faithful worship. And you see, especially in their time, whenever a king dies, it usually brings a time of mourning followed by chaos and many other struggles. You see, in the absence of a leader, there is fear that enemies will come and attack. Right? That's the best time to attack somebody, when they're in a time of chaos, when their great leader is gone. So there was fear the enemies would come and attack Judah. There are concerns about who will succeed the king. Will the next king be a good king or a bad king? Because Israel had a history of bad kings. And the question would be, was there going to be a fight for a throne? Because one family says, no, we are next in line of succession. And another family says, no, we are next in line of succession. Or brothers might be fighting. Yet in this dark time, in this period of chaos and mourning and difficulty, when everything that was going good seemed to be falling apart, it is in this time that Isaiah sought God and he found God. Now think about this past two years of politics and COVID. And in all of our worry, in all of our fear, and in all of our anxiety, how many of us actively sought God? I didn't hear a lot of God conversations. It was, can you believe followed by politics. Can you believe? Followed by COVID conversation. Can you believe? Complaining about the economy. And as we consider how we might see God, from the scripture we see that God isn't hard to find. Isaiah writes, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered the feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Heavenly being saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now that is a powerful statement. Because here we go have a God, and Isaiah's having this vision of this grand heavenly being, of this grand place of heaven and these magical creatures and angels singing of him. And what are they singing? Not that heaven is full of his glory. They said what? The whole earth is full of his glory. You see, we can see God through his creation. We can see God through the majesty of the mountains. We can see God through the great depths of the seas. 
We can see God in the heavenly bodies that are put before us at night. We can see God and the intricacies of how we created these small little flowers, of how we carried, how we made small little bugs and bees to carry their pollen and, and make them reproduce. And part of the reason that we miss God is because God has been taken out of creation by the world. I understand why some scientists want to take God out of the creation of the universe. And as smart as we think we are, still in our own little feeble minds, we can only explain what happened during creation in terms of billions of years. Now, I'm not a science denier. I don't deny what science has done for us. But I believe in a God who is powerful. I believe in the Lord Almighty. I believe that He is the divine creator. And I believe that He could do in six days what we see as billions or trillions of years. And if you don't believe in that God, then we don't believe in the same God. And we also see God in the blessing of a newborn baby who has never been in awe of tiny little fingers and toes and that little nose and these eyes that are just looking at you. Think about it, seven billion people on this earth, right? Yet when you hold that little baby, aren't you in awe? That God created us to reproduce and be creators? We see God when he provides comfort to us in a time of stress. We see God when he gives us strength in the face of adversity. And we see God when he answers our prayers. You see, if we seek God in all of his splendor, we'll find it. You'll find things when you're looking for them. It's like getting a new car. I remember when Carla first got her white Honda Pilot. I don't think in my life I had ever noticed a white Honda Pilot in my life. But after she got one, all of a sudden I see him everywhere driving down the road. How many white Honda Pilots can there be? But I wasn't looking for them. And now I see them everywhere. See, God is with us. God never leaves us. And God continues to work among us. And we need to be like God's angels. We need to proclaim that our God is a holy God. Our God is an awesome God. That our God is a gracious God. That our God is a loving God. And see, when we start seeing and sharing what God has done, the more we proclaim it, the more others will start to see what God has done because we're shifting our focus. While on vacation, Danny called me with a praise, and he shared that in the service last week. He said, Pastor Scott, I hate to bother you, but I have to share this joy with you. But you see, this is how we all should be. Instead of being focused on what's wrong with this world, we need to be pointing out and celebrating what great things God is doing. And when Danny called me all excited, it made my day. I had a smile on my face the rest of the day. What a blessing to see God at work and to hear how well Sylvia was doing. Because if you would have asked me a month or so ago when she was in hospice and could barely respond to anything, 
Everyone, including the doctors, was sure that Sylvie was in her last week. And today, she's ready to kick everybody out of her house and live solo. Isn't that true, Danny? She is ready. And she's about ready to be calling people up saying, get me to church. But what a joy. Could you imagine how it would change this world if we were joyful Christians and always saying, look what God has done? Then people will start to hear our message and say, wow, God is at work. God's not dead. God hasn't abandoned us. God is still here in his work in all the darkness and all the frustration and among all my fears and everything that's going on. God is still there. God is still the God of the universe and he is still in control. But see, we have to see it. We have to change our focus. And if I'm talking about it and Danny's talking about it and you start talking about it and you start talking about it, I mean, look at Jake's example of faith. Who's not been inspired by Jake? If you haven't talked to Jake since he's had cancer, you've, if you're not inspired, then we need to sit down. You need help. Because his faith is inspiring. God is working through Jake and his cancer. Matthew 6 says, The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? You see, if we're focused on negative things, it will affect our whole body negatively. I think that happened to a lot of people during COVID. They were so focused on the fears, so focused on the disease, so focused on the problem, it actually made them worse. But you see, if we focus on God and godly things, then it will positively affect our whole being. We need to change our focus. We need to seek God. And you see, that is what our Sunday worship is supposed to be. The whole point of worship, we start with a call to worship, we start with praise songs. Everything we do is a time when we focus on God. And when we focus on God, we will have an encounter with God. You'll see God in a hymn. You'll see God in the scriptures. You'll see God in the face of somebody who hugs you and loves you. And ask yourself, did you come to have an encounter with God or did you come for other reasons? Has your focus been on God this morning or have you been distracted by other things? And I know when people are coming here not focused on God, because then you'll get things, feedback, not directly, but you hear things. I didn't like the hymns. Service was too long. Oh, he's preaching about that again. Because see, you came here focused on the wrong thing. You didn't come here focused on God. The scripture said that the elders in Revelation, every time they went to praise God, they got on their hands and knees and humbled themselves. The heavenly beings covered themselves with their wings because they were in the presence of God Almighty. And today we have come to gather in the presence of God Almighty. And I think we forget that sometimes. And I know people who have been upset, well, I don't want to come to this restriction, or I don't want to come to that, and I don't want to, and this, or this person, or the politics, or this person didn't forgive me, or this person made me mad three years ago and I'm not coming back. Are they coming for God or are they coming for themselves? See, all those other things fall apart when we focus on who God is. So right now, I want everybody to close their eyes. 
And I want you to do your best to focus on God. And I want you to just listen and try to experience the presence of God. again. experience God it changes you and here today we are going to share in Holy Communion and when you come to seek an encounter with God it will change you Isaiah continues to write in his passage at the sound of their voices, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice, the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. See, the bread and the cup can do the same for you. See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I cried, Here I am. Send me. Now if you would, please grab your bulletin. Or your communion handout. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Join with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Christ's table is an open table. All who wish to receive are welcome. And my prayer is today, whether it is your first experience or your hundredth, that you truly come to receive and experience the love of Jesus Christ and your Lord God Almighty. Will our servers please come forward? Once the servers are here, we'll have two stations. You'll come through the center aisle, take bread, dip it in the cup, and take and return to your seat. If you would like, you may stop at the altar and take as much time as you like.
Our closing hymn is hymn 98, To God Be the Glory, and let us sing directly to the Lord as we sing today. Please stand. Let's not just make our focus on God Sunday morning. Let's keep our focus all week long. And then as we battle and we get a little worn down, we come back together, we get recharged, and we go back out. But it's not just about our focus on God. We have to shift other people's focus to God. So when you leave here today, I know a lot of you are on social media because one of the stupidest things you can do is friend your pastor because you can't hide from me on Sunday morning. I know where you're at. I know where you're not at. <laughs> but get on social media and give some glory to God. Make your own post. Get on and share this video. Do something. Call somebody who wasn't in church today and say, why weren't you here? God did amazing things today. We had holy communion. We fellowshiped, and we loved God together. And is there a better thing on this earth than loving God together? This is a wonderful place. This is a holy place. And we need to change the world's focus. And it's not going to happen unless we play the, the look game, right? You ever played that as a kid, made you look? 
my boys are going through that right now, and daddy's the king. Daddy's the king. Someone could be wearing sandals, your shoes untied. Oh, made you look, right? But except for this time, we want to do it right. Look at Jesus. Made you look. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus healed me. Jesus did this in our life. Jesus is doing this in our church. God is great. God is wonderful. And people are going to start looking. And they can't help but to see that our God is real, that God is at work, and that God is who we proclaim God to be. May you leave here focused on God. And may the light that is inside of you make other people look to see who God is. Let us go now in the name of our Almighty Father, of our wonderful and gracious Savior, and our powerful Holy Spirit. Amen.